What do these stamps, this model octopus, and my pet guinea pigs, Chester and Charlie, have in common? Welcome back, my learning and technology friends. When I was younger in elementary school, one of my favorite things that we did was show and tell. I could take something that I was passionate about, something like stamp collecting, or the ocean, or my pets, and I could tell my classmates all about them. And it was exciting. It was a chance to take something I was passionate about and present it. That's something that we want to encourage throughout the learning journey, both in ourselves and in others. But it was especially fun back when we were in, in elementary school. My wife, for example, really liked pets. So one time she brought a mother cat with a bunch of kittens to school. That didn't go over too well with the teacher, but it went over really well with her classmates. Uh, don't do that. If you're, if you're an elementary school teacher, comment down below. I'd like to know what the strangest thing that somebody has brought to show and tell in your classroom. But this isn't about show and tell. This is, well, maybe it is. This is really about how can I take something like an envelope or, or something small or a model like the octopus model or something that I don't really want to pick up and put in front of the camera like my pet guinea pigs. I pick them up to cuddle them, but I don't pick them up to put them in front of a camera because then where would I put them, right? They, they, they're, you know, they're little pigs. They want to go back in their cage. But the point here is that I still want to be able to share those with others. So in this video, I'm going to show you two technologies that will allow me to take an object up close so I can go and take a nice close up of that object and then project it onto a screen or I can push it out remotely in a remote teaching session. I'm going to show you a technology that will allow me to take my phone, use it as a webcam, and then put it on a long tether so I can put it into a cage, for example. Both of these technologies I use all the time. They're a great way to get up close for demonstrations, for show and tell, if you would, and to make sure that people can see what I'm seeing without having to pass out a box of kittens to everybody. So the two technologies that we're going to look at are going to be my CZUR scanner and using my phone as a web camera using Camo software. Now, when I'm using documents, I do like the CZUR scanner. I'm able to go in, do annotations on the documents with the screen, and it's a really useful tool for that. When I'm doing something where I want to be able to move around, then I like to use Camo because I can use that as a webcam to move around. Also, I can take it and put it onto a very long cord. So my iPhone cord, as well as a USB extension cable, allows me to take my phone, set it up as a webcam, and put it at a distance from me. Whether I'm in a classroom and I want to be able to put it on a tripod to get an overview of the classroom at the front, or whether I want to put it into my guinea pigs' cages, which is always cute because then you can see the guinea pigs running around. There's benefits to each of these tools, and I like them both. With the uh, webcam using Camo, by the way, I'll often use something like a suction cup and I'll mount it so I can put it into a, a stationary position or I'll even use a tripod if I want to get, say, a different angle and I use it as a webcam that I'm going to use while I'm in a meeting or something. But it is really, really handy for all of those uses, either as a extended remote camera or as something that I put onto a fixed position. Now, let's take a look at the CZUR scanner first, and then we'll take a look at using Camo. I've made, I've made dedicated videos to both of these products, and I've linked down below to where you can get them as well. So let's take a look at the CZUR scanner. Now, with the CZUR scanner, I've shown you in other videos how we can use it to scan a book or to convert to PDFs, make searchable PDFs. Now, when I launch the software, I'm going to go in and choose Visual Presenter instead of Scanner. I'm going to go in and display and you'll notice it'll detect the device and it will go in and show me the objects that I have here. Now one of the things, if I go and grab something, say my octopus, and I bring it in, you'll notice that it's not particularly fast at picking up video. So it does an okay job, but I do find for myself that I tend to use this more if I have something like stamps or if I have something like uh, documents that I want to review because there are some really neat features that I can do. So first of all, let's say I go in, I can choose to annotate these documents. So I've chosen in, I'll chose to use a red line here and now I can actually go here. So for example, this here envelope was deposited in Antarctica. It was actually deposited using the ship, the USS uh, Arneb, and it was deposited by the United States Navy, and it was sent to Canada. Pretty cool. 
This other first day cover was from 1960. This one's from 1960 for that one. 1955 for this first day cover. And this was deposited in the Australian Antarctic Territory. This here is a polar bear, and there are exactly zero polar bears in Antarctica because they're on, they only live up in the north. Actually, not too far from my house. Well, far enough that I'm not worried. Now, one of the things I really like with this is if I, if I go in, you'll notice that I'm able to actually... I'll move these objects down a little bit. I can actually go in, and I can zoom in on the object. I'll clear off my annotation. And you can see that it's actually quite readable. So you could actually project this onto a screen in the front of a classroom or a presentation room, or you could use this and present this out as a remote input for a team meeting. Now, something that I like here is if I go in and make an annotation, so here are the specifications for this particular stamp that was released, and I'll zoom in just a little bit more. Notice, as I zoom in, the annotations that I make are also scaled. I think this is a really cool feature. It doesn't seem like much, it seems like a small feature, but it actually is fairly significant because that means that any annotations I make are actually going to live with the document where I make them. And there are other features that we can go in here and do as well that are very handy. We can even go in and record what we're doing so you can actually make a video of this, plus you have some shapes and such. It's fun to experiment with. The second tool I'm going to use is my camo software that's going to allow me to turn my phone into a webcam. And this is very handy as well, especially if I put it on a very long cable, because now what I can do is I can mount this at a distance from me, and I now have either my main camera, for example, on my Surface, I can switch between my Surface camera and a camera that's actually at a bit of a distance from me. This is really handy if I want to go in and maybe zoom in on an object. So let's say I want to go in, zoom in on an object that I might have. I can also do all sorts of interesting presets and such, but it's really quite useful for me to be able to show you something up close. There's my podcasting microphone. There's a plant that I have at my desk here. And then I can go in and I can go into a meeting, for example, go into Microsoft uh, Teams here. I'll go to a meeting and I can actually put this camel camera as being my input. So you can see here, I've got it as my input. I can even go in and I can change it so that the microphone is either my Surface, which is the array, the, the Realtek high definition audio, or here I can go into camo. So now if, for example, I put this camera into my guinea pig cage and I wanna to listen to the guinea pigs, I can switch to the guinea pig camera I can switch to the guinea pig microphone and then I can switch back to my main microphone here and I can actually switch to any of the other cameras that I have attached to my computer. In my case, I have a front and rear camera for my Surface. So you can see I can share documents, I can share stamps, I can share objects, I can move a camera around the room, I can do all of this. And it's important to note that I can do this either by projecting it onto a screen at the front of the class so that a larger audience can see it up close, or also by pushing it out remotely in more of a remote environment. They're both very useful tools. I actually use both of them for different things all the time, and I hope you found that's interesting. If you did, comment and like below all of the good stuff. Share with colleagues that can benefit. It really helps the channel, actually, that engagement. It's, it's a youtube -y thing, but, you know, like if you like, share if you think somebody else can benefit, and comment down below if you have any ideas of your own. And especially, again, if you're that elementary school teacher, the strangest thing that you ever saw in show and tell.